Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how, how you can self-host a FileGator server and use it kind of to just have people upload files um, to your server to either be used or reviewed or downloaded later. Um, this is actually a very nice case that I've kind of um, have used before previously where essentially like I went to on a trip with my cousins to Europe and this would be great for you know anonymous file uploading so that everyone can just share all their photos can get downloaded into one spot and be used you can also do this for like event photos where if you want anyone from like your friends or family that took phone video um, photos with a uh, phone um, they can also go to you know your file gator site and then upload it there anonymously and or if you want them to create an account you can do that too and they can just kind of upload and then you can get a collection of everyone's photos from you know all their phones and everything as they upload it so if you're just kind of looking for a place to kind of compile all the photos that you know anyone can you know at an event can upload or from like a tour or a trip um, from your family this is kind of a nice way to do it, and I'll show you how you can kind of get it to work um, with like anonymous uploading so that you can just, you know, set it, set it up for an event. So, uh, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So, if you enjoy my content and want to sponsor me or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, let's get started, guys. All right. So, um, the first thing that we'll do is open a terminal. So, we got our base server set up already. Um, so if you're looking on how to install and you know a Linux OS, uh, you can check out my first few videos in my home lab series. Um, that will go through that. Um, but what we'll actually do is log into it, um, which is our base. Um, so we got a server we call it FileGator. Um, nothing too fancy, just kind of you know name name what it is. Um, but what we'll do is install Docker on it uh, because it's a Docker repository for this. So what we'll do is add the Docker repo. To be able to install Docker, um, so Linux CentOS Docker CE dot repo, and then we'll do a yum y install Docker CE. All right. While this goes on and installs, I am going to go to our GitLab here and actually update our DNS. Um, now, if you know you're wanting to publicly self-host this. Um, you would obviously update your DNS wherever you have it, whether it's Cloudflare, whether it's AWS written Route 53, or somewhere else. Uh, in this case, this whole home lab series is everything internally, so um, I won't be showing you how to make it public, but you can kind of follow the steps in regards to like what you would need to do from like a you know public standpoint. Um, so in this case, we'll update our DNS server um, and we'll add our um, link here. So file gator in a and then we have to use our private IP but in here you would use like your public IP if you were making this public obviously um, so we'll save that commit it add a file gator all right so now that that's added what we'll do here so that looks like it's installed so we'll enable docker and we'll start docker all right and then what we'll do here is look up file gator um, github. Um, so they have their github here and you can kind of see it's just kind of an easy file upload um, thing here. Nothing too fancy, but we got the docker configuration down here. So what we'll do here is copy this and we'll make a script and we will call it um, a start docker.sh. Um, so hashtag bin bash and paste that. Um, so it'll essentially open uh, start docker on 8080 on ours and forward to 8080. Um, it will run detached so it won't run in the screen in the session that it is. So actually that's that's all good. So we'll leave that there. Um, chmod plus x start docker sh. So that will make it executable. So essentially I can just dot slash start docker dot sh and it will start it. Now, the other thing to note here is you want to set up HTTPS because if you want people to upload, you really want to set up HTTPS. So what we'll do here um, is log in to our CA server here. Make directory file gator. Um, and the same thing, um, you could use Let's Encrypt, you could use um, 
Digicert or anything else for your TLS. I have a self-hosted CA server at home, so that's what I'm doing here for this home lab series, but you would essentially get the cert and the key from wherever you host your TLS stuff and then apply it, download it and apply it to your server. So um, the steps would be different, obviously, depending on what you're using, but essentially once you have the files, it's the same steps afterwards. Um, so in this case, we're gonna create a certificate. We'll call it filegator.dragon.local for the domain. Um, and then we'll get uh, dragon.local.cert and then we'll get the key here. Well, I'll put the key here, local.key. And then we need the provisioner key. So that is in our vault order for hours. Um, so let me log into our vault order real quick. Copy the password, paste that, and we're good. So now we got the cert and the key. So we'll copy those two over to our server. Okay, so that should be good. Okay, so now we can go back to our other server. We can see that uh, Docker is running, it is up, it is listening on 8080, and we should be good with that. Um, so what we'll do is install Nginx now. So we'll use Nginx to proxy through. So Nginx will be essentially doing the TLS termination um, and then proxying it to our application on 8080. So now that we have that installed, we'll make um, the directory Etsy PKI Nginx private. Um, and then the two keys, uh, the, the cert and the key, sorry, um, we'll move them. So we'll move the cert to Etsy PKI Nginx. And then we'll move the key to Etsy PKI Nginx private. Once we have that done, we'll edit the Nginx Nginx configuration. We'll scroll all the way down, um, shift G if you're using Vi, you can go all the way down to the bottom of it, and then we'll uncomment the SSL section here, and then we'll update a few values in here. So we'll update the certificate because the certificate is named filegator.dragon.local.cert, and the key is filegator.dragon.local.key. Then we'll update our proxy pass here to be HTTP localhost 8080. And then since we're doing upload stuff, we'll also want to set it so that um, essentially there isn't a max body size. So we'll hit the client max body size to be zero. Um, and then we'll hit the proxy read timeout to be a really large number. Um, this is so that um, essentially the connection for an upload uh, proxying through Nginx doesn't die or get crashed on because the, uh, the file is too big. Um, so we'll save that and then we will restart Nginx here. All right, so now that you have all that squared away, um, you should be able to um, go to filegator.dragon.local now. We can do, go through HTTPS, um, the login, so if you go back here, you can log in as admin and admin one, two, three. So the first thing that you want to do is change the password, um, mainly because wow, it doesn't actually uh, encrypt it. So we'll, we'll, we'll change the password to be that, but you'll want to change it. Um, oh, you can hide it. No, I guess it doesn't hide. Interesting. Oh, it does. That's so weird. Okay, we'll change it to that. It's opposite. <laughs> it's okay though. <clears throat> so we'll change the password. That's the big thing because you don't want someone to accidentally get to your file gator for some ungodly reason, especially now that now that you've created it publicly, right? So we'll change our password to be that. This is not a public instance though, so I'm not worried that this, I'm sure this is probably a commonly used password, um, but we'll change it to that. So we'll save that. So now we can log in as admin. Oh, okay. So um, the few things that we'll do here is essentially show you how you can make it so that users can anonymously upload. So like, you know, say for an event, you're just like, oh, well, I want all my wedding photos. If you've taken wedding photos for this event, feel free to upload. Or if you had, you know, people um, that you hired to do this, um, and they don't want to use like a Dropbox or something, you can you can use this too. So. Um, 
Let's copy this real quick. Oh, by the top. So by default, we get we we do get this like login here. There isn't anything you can do. So what we'll do here is go to users. We'll actually enable the guest account. And um, actually, first thing is actually we'll create an, create a new folder. Actually, so we'll go to files. We we'll create a new folder, and we can put like weddings, right? Like for our wedding event. Um, so what you can do here now is you can go to users, hit guest, and you you can select weddings, and then you can select write. Oh, upload. Sorry, upload, not write. Um, just upload. Confirm. And so essentially anyone with guest access can upload and when they upload, it will go to the weddings directory. Um, the nice thing about this is essentially, you know, it's a, it's kind of anonymous. So now you can see it, they would go to this here and they would just add files. Um, so in this case, I have like two videos, but we can add a file. Um, so they can see, you know, it's successfully uploaded, but there is nothing that they can see because they don't have read access, which is what we essentially want, right? So we go back to our admin and we load this, we can go to our weddings and you can see that now there is a file here. Um, and if you click on it, it would just download, but you can copy, move and rename. Um, the careful thing about this is, you know, obviously if you make it public, you want to make sure you're not just randomly downloading, you know, something that might be sketchy. Um, but if you know, you're going to, you know, make the site available for that short period duration of, Hey, I'm going to have my wedding from here to here. Anyone with photos, you know, upload it while you're, while you're at the wedding, it makes perfect sense. So, um, the nice thing about this is essentially what you can do is because you know what the link is here to like add files, what you can do is you can actually go to like, do like, um, uh, QR code generator. And you know you can use like you create a few QR code generator, um, accept all cookies, create a QR code, and then use and then paste this QR code into you know your your banner or whatnot, being like, hey, if you took you know photos for the wedding um, and you want to share them with us, you know, scan the QR code, it will bring you to the website, um, this website, and then you can just upload the file. So it's very simple, easy, and nice to use to kind of just centralize everyone's photos because when you're like, Hey, can you send me the photos? And you know, now you have like hundred photos to send. Um, it's a lot harder to send it through like a, a Facebook messenger or whatever app. So that's one way that you can use FileGator. Obviously, if you have other things that you want to just upload or whatnot, you can for sure. Um, but I like to use it for like events and stuff like that because it makes it easy to kind of centralize one place that everyone can just throw some photos in. And sometimes you get some interesting photos that you may not ever have seen um, because someone else took it. So there you go, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.